Hello, this is Benoit. Welcome to another episode of C++ for Arduino. Today we will talk about a topic that doesn't receive as much attention as it should. Heap fragmentation. There is much free RAM, so why allocation fails? My program ran well for hours. Why does it crash now? Why does my program run slower over time? Believe it or not, the answer to these three questions are the same. You have a heap fragmentation problem. In this video, we will see what it means and how to fix it. The heap is the area of the RAM where the dynamic memory allocation happens. Every time you call malloc, you reserve a block of memory in the heap. Similarly, every time you call new, you reserve a block in the heap. Very often, your program allocates heap memory without explicitly calling malloc. For example, when you create a string object, the constructor allocates some space in the heap to store the characters. When you call free to release a block from the heap, you create a hole of unused memory. After some time, the heap becomes a Swiss cheese with many holes. Here is a simplified view with an imaginary heap of 30 bytes. Currently, two blocks of 10 bytes are allocated. Suppose we release the first block. Now, there are 20 bytes available. However, we are unable to allocate 20 bytes because there is not a consecutive block of 20 bytes. This phenomenon is what we call heap fragmentation. It's an inefficient utilization of the RAM that prevents your program from using the full capacity of your microcontroller. Suppose you just released a block of memory and therefore created a hole in the heap. Is that always a problem? There are three possibilities. First possibility, you allocate another block of the same size. The new block takes the place left by the old one. No hole remains. Second possibility, you allocate a smaller block. The new block fits in the hole left but doesn't fill it. A small hole remains. Third possibility. You allocate a larger block. The new block cannot fit in the hole, so it's allocated further in the heap. A big hole remains. As you see, only a program that allocates and releases blocks of different size increases the heap fragmentation. Now that we get the theory, let's see a concrete example. Consider an Arduino that downloads the weather forecast from a web server. It first saves the response to a big string. Then it extracts the date, the city, the temperature, the humidity and the weather description in five strings of various size. Here is the problem. Every time the server returns a different response, new strings are created. As the size of the string change, new holes appear in the heap, thereby increasing the fragmentation. There are several formal definitions for the fragmentation. In this video, we will use this simple definition. Let's try some numbers with this formula. Suppose you have 1k of free RAM. At 0%, which means no fragmentation, you can allocate 1 kilobyte in one shot. At 25%, you can allocate 750 bytes in one shot. At 50%, you can only allocate 500 bytes in one shot and at 75% you can only allocate 250 bytes in one shot. 
a value of 50% or more is considered high and can seriously impede your program as we will see. I created a program to simulate what happens in the weather forecast example. Here is how the fragmentation evolves over time. As you see, when the program starts, the fragmentation is close to zero and then increases after each iteration until it stabilizes at about 70%. If you want to look at the details, please check out the source code on GitHub. We saw how fragmentation increases. Now let's talk about the consequences of a high fragmentation level. Consequence number one, an unreliable program. By definition, a high fragmentation level means you have a lot of free memory, but you can only allocate small blocks. If your program needs a bigger block, you will not get it and it will stop working. Consequence number two, degraded performance. A highly fragmented heap is slower because the memory allocator takes more time to find the best hole, the so-called best fit. If it's so huge, why nobody talks about it? Heap fragmentation is a solved problem for most programmers. Indeed, there are many cures to heap fragmentation. Virtual memory, optimized allocators, short string optimization, heap compiling, memory pools. Unfortunately, none of these techniques apply on Arduino. So what can I do to reduce heap fragmentation? As we saw, there are no automatic systems that will solve this problem for us, which means that we have to code in a way that reduces fragmentation. Here are three simple recommendations. Number one, avoid heap. In particular, avoid string. In many cases, we can avoid dynamic allocation. Instead of allocating objects in the heap, we can place them in the stack or in the globals. By design, these two areas are not fragmented. For example, we could replace string objects with plain old char arrays. Not only we would reduce the fragmentation, but we would also create a smaller and faster executable. Number two, short object lifetime. Short-lived objects have a small impact on the heap fragmentation. They rapidly come and go, leaving the heap in the same state. Long-lived objects, however, have a substantial impact on the heap fragmentation. They book their room and stick here for a long time, leaving the heap with an unmovable block in the middle. So. If you still need another reason to avoid global variables, there you have it. Number three, constant allocation. As we saw, repeated allocation of the same size don't cause fragmentation. So we could keep our objects in the heap, but always use the same size. For example, if we have a string that can have between 10 and 100 characters, we could always reserve 100 characters. As curious as it sounds, allocating more memory than strictly necessary allows more efficient utilization of the RAM. Here is what you need to remember from this video. 1. Fragmentation is an inefficient utilization of the RAM. 2. Arduino programs more than any others are affected by fragmentation. 3. It's our responsibility as programmer to fight against fragmentation. As usual, you will find the source code of the examples on GitHub and I'll see you soon with another video. Thanks for watching!